Greetings, humans. I'm Andre, and I'm George, and welcome back to the Windmill Full of Corpses. Okay, now today we have something that's gonna skip the line for a little bit. We did film a couple of your suggestions, and they'll be coming down the line, so keep an eye out for that. But we just needed to have this reaction come up today, because this song just released yesterday, and it's pretty special. So, as we all learned in late 2020, Alexi Laiho unfortunately passed away. The mastermind of Children of Bottom, who's now just about a legend of Finnish melodic death metal and definitely a pioneer for the metal scene. We can't say we were ever Children of Bottom's greatest fans, but we simply needed to do this one because you can't, you simply can't deny the value that he had for the music. And given the fact that Bottom After Midnight is the last music we'll ever hear from Children of Bottom and that this is the title track from their album Paint the Sky with Blood, it's a fair chance that this might be the, the last chance we get that Alexi Laiho and the windmill cross paths. So we couldn't really let that pass. Yeah. So okay, we're gonna get right into this and we don't want to make this any more tragic than it absolutely needs to be because if you're such a genius we think you should rather be remembered for the fun music you put out. Yeah. So without a further ado, Bodom After Midnight. Paint the sky with blood. And go. Okay, so straight off the bat, all the children of Bowden DNA is in there. The sound on the keyboards, the style of riffing on the guitars, and the fast forward pushing energy, and the look with the iconic flying V guitar and him in the middle, that's just children of Bowden all the way. So it's definitely got the DNA of everything we know from men. Children of Bowden haven't exactly been changing their style too much throughout their history. But I think this one maybe sounded a little bit blackened with the way that blast sound like came straight in from the beginning. You have a point with that. I didn't really think about the blackened element because along with the blast also came like an orchestral layer. I yes. don't think there was much orchestration in Children of Bodom. I think they had the keyboard, which was probably adding a bit of an, I wouldn't say orchestral, but maybe more melodic symphonic-ish touch. Yes. But it was never really orchestral. And with with this orchestral thing, it it seems more epic to me than what I expected and maybe a bit less just plain aggressive. Yeah, I think I feel you with that, and I do think they had a very iconic keyboard sound. I don't think I ever heard anybody build keyboard sounds like Children of Bodom did, and well, it was it was just one keyboard, but it did sound pretty big and full, so maybe that can be mistaken for an orchestra if you don't really know what's happening. So it, it definitely threw me back to the likes of Every Time I Die, which have the keyboard coming forward a bit more. Let's see how this progresses. Face and yokes 
Okay, um, I have more thoughts. I was going to say this is sounding a little bit different than what I know from Children of Bodom, and I think they actually wanted to make it that way because this isn't actually Children of Bodom anymore because they split up before all the tragic events happen. But I think they got more into the traditional Children of Bodom, bleh, more into the traditional Children of Bodom sound with this sort of driven riff and a bit more earworm into the chorus this time around. Yeah, the chorus is definitely really catchy, but what's What's getting to me the most actually is the guitar riff and the melody. I think both the riff and the lead melody are very melodic and they, they have this really cool tone and really engaging feel. And it feels pretty epic. Children of Bodom was a lot of things, but I don't think I would have described it as epic. I know Finnish melodic death metal often gets into like epic soundscapes, but Children of Bodom, at least for me, didn't really do that. It was mostly just heavy and badass. But this is pretty epic, and it seems to have a more refined sound and like a lot of flow in the composition. I would say some of the transitions almost felt slightly progressive, or if not progressive, at least unexpected. It definitely has a more polished sound, especially if you compare with the old stuff from Children of Bodom, which really made it, I guess, to everyone's ears, because it's also new, so it's more modern produced. I haven't heard much of late Children of Bodom, so I wouldn't know that much about that. But anyway, let's see where this goes. stop it there because I think it's, this is Alexi Lyho so it has to go in a guitar solo and once that happens it's gonna be all that's in my head and now I have thoughts about this progression. It was a really cool change in pace and I like how they amped up the orchestrals and actually threw a theme in there. Yes. I think up until this point in the song the orchestration was just like holding chords like on the background it was just for a soundscape mm -hmm. but here it actually got a theme and came more to the front forefront and it actually gave me more of the like ethereal symphonic style of orchestrations you see in bands like Frost Tide, I don't know, Brimir, maybe even Winter Sun, but that, that's another thing I wasn't expecting and it was really cool. And also another thing that I picked up on was the drum sound. Well, the drum playing is really cool and I like how it progressed here into the kicks, but also the sound itself, I feel, I feel it's pretty organic, but, but still very sharp and it's, yeah. I, I can I can definitely see that and I think that was also the case often with Children of Bodom but I think they have they had a way of getting this sort of raw aggression that you get from death metal but they would still have it sound melodic enough so that it's appealing almost like a hard rock band would be they yeah, were always yeah. earworms but they didn't compromise on any of that sort of visceral aggression that you get in the most extreme sides of metal yeah you're going where I was going with this so it has the extremity of like death metal and stuff but I, I think like the pace and the energy is very much like classic heavy metal or even hard rock mm -hmm. and, and the attitude and even the look to some extent. Yeah, probably. So We're probably, you have anything else to say? I was just going to say, let's go into it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're probably going to get a solo now. So.
Can we have a moment? Yeah. Five seconds. Yes. Okay. So, in memory of Alexi Laiho, this was a pretty killer song. And I do have a couple of more musical details to comment on, which is the gang shouts and backing vocals that he gets from the other guys. I don't think he had that with Children of Bodom. I think that's new. Yeah, and I think I'm also, I'm, I'm getting a bit of battle metal feel for that. And well, yeah. it's called Paint the Sky with Blood, and it was saying, like, I think this, the shouting was actually fight. So yeah, it, yeah. It, is, it is a bit of a call to battle song in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a really cool touch. Now, one other thing I don't know is, I know when Children of Bodom split up, three people left, and they were five overall, so which one of the other three guys was from Children of Bodom? Let us know, if you know. Um, yeah. This was a really cool sound, really high octane, really fun, really what we know him for. And I'm really glad that we got one of those solos with the iconic shredding sort of neoclassical stuff that he, he really sort of um, patented back in the day. So this was a really, really cool one. Also, since this is pretty much a tribute to Alexi Laiho we're doing here, I have to spotlight Alexi Laiho, particularly with his like stage attitude with throwing the guitars everywhere and just the badassery that he yeah and black puts nails and yeah yeah I was gonna say that too the black nails I think he always has the black nails mm -hmm. so yeah super cool guy I guess legend of melodic death metal it was great to have him around and well I guess this is his last offering to us so yeah we're really grateful for his music and for his existence and I think all of the metal scene should be yeah one thing one thing that's coming to mind is that even if maybe we weren't the greatest children of bottom fans. Just think about all the Finnish death metal bands that we listen to. They're probably at some point influenced by him. So it's definitely it's definitely something that you have to appreciate. And one more thing that's just come to mind that I have to say is that if you take every Grim Ripper from the cover of every Children of Bodom album, they'd probably be enough to fill a windmill. And on that note, our tribute to Alexi Laiho ends. <laughs> yes. So now let us know what are your thoughts of this song of Bodom After Midnight of Children of Bodom. Um, like we said, we're not very big on them, so maybe drop some suggestions from Children of Bottom, and of course other Finnish or Nordic melodic met death metal will do. If you enjoyed this video, we'd greatly appreciate the likes and shares, and, you feel to, and if you feel like you'd like to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, with bells on. Thank you very much for stopping by, we hope you enjoyed your stay, and we'd love to see you back at the windmill very soon. Corpse is out!